Hey there, this is Mr. Weaver. This is Unit 1, Lesson 6, Scaling and Area for our Scale Models Unit. After this lesson, you need to be able to describe how the area of a scale copy is related to the area of the original figure based on what scale factor was used. You'll know you're successful if after this lesson you can compare the areas of the original figure and the scale copy and you can relate that scale factor to the change in its area. Let's get started looking at how the areas compare. So here we have a rectangle. It's two tall, it's four wide. Let's say we multiply by a scale factor of two. So now our figure is four tall and eight wide. We're gonna look at the areas. So our original area, it was two squares by four squares. So it is eight units total, eight square units. Well, let's compare that to the area of our scale copy. It was 4 by 8, so it is 32 square units. Well, it was 8, now it's 32. That's 4 times larger. So each side was multiplied by a scale factor of 2, but the area becomes 4 times larger. Next, let's look what happens to the area if our scale factor is less than 1. So our original again is two by four. We want a scale factor of less than one. So let's use half. Two times the scale factor of half would give us a one unit tall figure. Four times the scale factor of half would give us two units wide. So our new rectangle is now one by two. So again, if we look at the area, our original was two by four, so it's still eight square units. But our next shape is one by two, which is two square units. To go from eight to two, the area is now one fourth of its original size. Let's look at another example. So here we have a rectangle that's one unit tall by three units wide. Let's choose a scale factor of three, so it's larger. Well, if we do that, our scale copy of our rectangle becomes three by nine. So our original area was three square units. Now it's 27 square units. This time it was three, now it's 27. It is nine times larger. Why is this happening? Like, why all of a sudden is the area not the same amount larger as the scale factor? In the first area, we're multiplying by three. Well, we're not only multiplying three going sideways, right? Going from three to nine. We're also multiplying three going up and down. So essentially, you had to multiply by 3 in two different directions. Well, 3 times 3 is 9. The area changed by 9 times. It's 9 times larger. Notice it was 3. Now it's 27. That's 9 times larger. Let's look about going smaller. So we had a scale factor of half. Not only did we multiply half going sideways, we also multiplied a half going up and down. Again, if we combine those two together, I had to do a half twice, half times half. That ends up being one fourth. One half times one half is one fourth. Our area is now one fourth of what it was. Eight, now it's two. So when we're figuring out area, the scale factor goes two directions. You had to do it twice. 
multiply that together. That's how much your area is changing. In this lesson, we learned that area is different than just the length of first scale factor. So scale copies, all of the original lengths are multiplied. So going sideways, it gets multiplied, and going up and down, it gets multiplied. What this means is that it changes by the scale factor squared. So to the exponent of 2. Remember, exponents just mean that it's the number times itself. If each length of this rectangle we can see here was multiplied by 3, then the scale copy was is going to be 9 times larger because 3 times 3 is 9. If we wanted to verify, we could see the original rectangle has an area of 8 units and our scale copy has an area of 72 units. Well, 8 times 9 is 72. It's 9 times larger, even though the scale factor was 3. We learned this is happening because lengths are one-dimensional. They only change by the scale factor once. While area is two-dimensional, so it's going to change by that scale factor twice. The scale factor times the scale factor. After this lesson, do you know how to determine and explain how the area of a scale copy relates and compares to the area of our original figure. And that's it for lesson six with scaling and area.